on at McMaster University with regard to genetics. And one of the leading geneticists in North America happens to be an old schoolmate of mine from Delta Secondary School. And where some of us chose to go into the steel mills, Dr. Jack Galdi had another uh, life plan in mind, and he's with us today. Jack, welcome to the program. Thanks, Bob. So how did you get from Delta to genetics? <laughs> well, uh, after Delta, I went to McMaster. And McMaster was a fantastic uh, science school. And uh, I did my undergraduate work there in, in chemistry and physics. And uh, at the end of it, uh, I had a chemistry prof, um, Ron Gillespie, who uh, said, why didn't I think about going to England? Because there was a possibility of going to graduate school in, in uh. London. And uh, I didn't have a good answer to that other than say, ah, it's a good idea. Plus, at that time, I, I really thought that uh, I should get out of Hamilton. It's, it's a, place a lot of us felt that. A lot of us felt yeah. that. <laughs> that I should get out of for sure. Uh, so I went to, to went to London, and I was I, I, I did a degree there in biological chemistry. I moved into the biology area, much more interesting than straight chemistry, and uh, spent about seven years in London. Um, and at the time, the new medical school was being built here at uh, Hamilton, mm -hmm. and it coincided with the possibility of ha coming back on a traveling uh, return scholarship from the Medical Research Council um, to join the faculty at, uh, at McMaster. So I came back, uh, again, thinking, well, I'll come back to Hamilton, see what it's like. Of course, the medical school was fantastic, has been fantastic, mm -hmm. and, and all along, there's been really no reason for me to, to leave where, where I can do the things I love to do in a, in a, in a place I like to be. So I, I love the sound of it, genetics and all of this wonderful no. bio, this and that. What is it that you actually do? Okay. <laughs> uh, well, let me explain it this way. Uh, the body's immune system, this is an area that I moved into about 20 years ago, mm -hmm. uh, immunology, 25 years ago. Right. And, and the body's immune system is an exceptionally capable system of defending us. After all, we stay alive 80, 90 years, we hope. Mm -hmm. um, and and we're, we're embattled by a number of viruses, bacteria, all kinds of organisms, and yet the immune response keeps us safe. And uh, along the way, we also know that we've been able to discover that things like cancers uh, are slightly different than the normal body cells. Mm -hmm. um, and the immune response is capable of detecting those very small differences between the normal cell and a cancer cell. Mm -hmm. However, our immune response gets manipulated by the tumors. It gets dampened down by the systems. And in most individuals who end up having tumors or having cancers, the immune response knows it's there but can't do much about it. So over the last 15, 20 years, we've been working on ways to stimulate the immune response, make it recognize that there is a cancer there, and then enlist the body's own defense mechanisms to deal with a cancer. That's one area. Wow. And, and it's been very difficult to do. It's been difficult because the tumors have evaded uh, detection, they've evaded uh, a, a attack by the, by the immune response. Um, We've got ways now of making the immune response be stimulated. And to do that, we actually can take cells from the individual carrying the tumor. Because if we do this in the, in the lab, if I take cells from the individual carrying a tumor and some tumor cells from the individual and place them in culture in the laboratory and do a, f a few things to them, if I put them back together again, in many cases I can show that the cells will kill the tumor cells. So. It's there, but we don't know how to do it in the body as well as we can. But a large number of efforts uh, around the world, we're one of the ones that, that, that have taken on, um, have attempted to capture these cells. Uh, they happen to be cells that are called dendritic cells, and they're also lymphocytes, the white cells of the body mm -hmm. that, that, uh, that we're trying to, to uh, get uh, activated. 
So if we take the cells from the patient and we manipulate them in the laboratory, mm -hmm. get them educated so that they are now capable of seeing the tumor, put that back into the patient, that's basically immunization or stimulation of the immune response so that those cells will are capable of recognizing and killing the tumor. We're, we're close to that uh, actuality and in, in the last two years in some restrictive cancers, particularly leukemia.